What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Bible study. Still here in the book of Zephaniah. There's only three chapters in the book of Zephaniah. And here we go with Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Yes, join together. You nation without shame. Before the decree takes effect. And so the nation without shame. He's saying gather together, you nation without shame. I'm going to just go through a couple other scriptures. We read in Joel 2.27. Thus you will know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahuwah your God, and there is no other, and my people will never be put to shame. We read in Zephaniah 3, verse 11. In that day you will feel no shame because of your, all your deeds which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proud, exalting ones, and you will never be haughty on my holy mountain. And we read in 1 John 2, verse 28. Now, little children, abide in him. And we abide in Him by keeping His commandments. By being obedient to Him. Serving Him. Now, little children, abide in Him. So that when He appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from Him. And shame at His coming. And then one more, Revelation 16. Behold, verse 15. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his clothes, so that he will not walk about naked and men will not see his shame. So those without shame are those with the clothes on, the garments, and that's obedience to God. That's our garment, our righteousness, our obedience to God. Back to Zephaniah 2. Gather yourselves together. Yes, join together, you nation without shame. Before the decree takes effect, the day passes like chaff. And um, the word for decree, let's see. I actually don't have it pulled up here anymore. The word for decree also means statutes or uh, could be the com command and take effect that can also be translated gives birth so before the command or decree gives birth meaning before it happens and we know the birth is related to uh, the resurrection and rapture But uh, speaking about before the day of the Lord is what it's speaking about. To gather yourselves together, yes, join together, you nation without shame. Before the decree takes effect, the day passes like chaff. Before the burning anger of Yahuwah, the Lord, comes upon you. And this nation without shame... We read in Revelation 14 about the 144,000. It says they are blameless. The nation without shame. But also those who overcome as well. But I believe this is speaking about the 144,000. Gathered together before the decree takes effect. Before this day comes. The 144,000 are gathered. Before the burning anger of the Lord comes upon you. Before the day of Yahuwah's anger comes upon you. Seek Yahuwah. Seek the Lord. All you humble of the earth. Who have practiced his, practiced his ordinances. Seek righteousness. 
Seek humility. Perhaps you will remain hidden on the day of the Lord's anger. We need to seek righteousness. Seek humility. Because we don't deserve anything. We're nothing. Really. We're nothing. We don't deserve anything from God. We're still sinners as well. Of course, we've come out of that lifestyle. Hopefully, everyone who's watching this has come out, come out of that lifestyle. But still, we're not perfect. We're no better than anyone else. We're not God. We can't justify ourselves before Him. We got to be humble. Seek Yahuwah, seek the Lord, are you humble of the earth, who have practiced His ordinances. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will remain hidden on the day of Yahuwah's anger. Jesus said, pray daily, or pray always, that you're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before Him. When you got to be humble, and he also says, seek righteousness, which is keeping his commandments, staying on a straight and narrow path. We've got to stay on a straight and narrow path. We've got to keep all his commandments. And one major thing is the Sabbath day. You know, uh, God just led me to say this. A lot of people don't keep the Sabbath. But that's one of the Ten Commandments. And there's excuses given, um, saying it's done away with, saying Jesus is our Sabbath, and that was just for the Jews, but that's not the case. The Bible doesn't say that. And if you think it does, I can explain some passages to you. But we're supposed to be keeping the Sabbath. We're supposed to be honoring it by resting on the seventh day, which is Saturday. And this is important. This is very important. Seek righteousness. Seek humility. Perhaps you will remain hidden on the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza will be abandoned. And Ashkelon will become a desolation. And so... The nations, all the nations in this chapter that, that we're going to read about, all of them actually have links to the United States, to Babylon. But I believe a lot of these are referring specifically to uh, these places, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. But... Um, a lot of them can also be linked to Babylon, or be linked to the daughter of Babylon, the United States, in a lot of other scriptures. For Gaza will be abandoned, and this is still called Gaza. For Gaza will be abandoned, and Ashkelon will become a desolation. The inhabitants of Ashdod will be driven out at noon. And there's other scriptures that mention destruction at noon. And Ekron will be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. And let me just stop there before I continue with that. But the, the nations that, that were just mentioned there was uh, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, and uh, I think it's at Ekron. But at least those three, and these were all Philistine nations. And the Philistines in some scriptures are also linked to the U.S., but it's also linked to Gaza because if we go to Go to the maps. We pull up Google Maps. One second. 
right here in Israel, the Gaza Strip. And let me zoom in a little bit. We have the Gaza Strip. That's Gaza. And then we see Ashkelon and Ashdod. North of Gaza, which is uh, currently in Israel. But it's uh, part of the seacoast, which it, it mentions. But as I said, there's, all, there's ties to all these as well in other scriptures to the U.S., but we're going to see the U.S. specifically mentioned here in a minute as uh, Assyria. For Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon will become a desolation. The inhabitants of Ashdod will be driven out at noon and Ekron will be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of Yahuwah is against you, Canaan, land of the Philistines. And I will, eliminate, I will eliminate you so that there will be no inhabitant. And that's also said about Babylon. So the sea coast will become grazing places with pastures for shepherds and folds for flocks. And the coast will be for the remnant of the house of Judah, the Jews. They will drive sheep to pasture on it. In the houses of Ashkelon, they will lie down at evening. For Yahuwah their God will take care of them, or will care for them, and restore their fortunes. I have heard the taunting of Moab, and abusive speech of the sons of Ammon. So Moab and Ammon they're in modern modern day Jordan on the other side of Israel but they're also types of the US in prophecy and a lot of the a lot of these you know like it speaks about the US is mentioned as many places as Egypt as Babylon but still Egypt and Babylon are going to still receive these different punishments these different judgments. But specifically. Those are mentioned. As a. Uh, as a. Uh, they're, they're linked to the U.S. I've heard the taunting of Moab. The abusive speech. Of the sons of Ammon. With which they have taunted my people. And boasted against their territory. And um. Modern day Jordan has done this, but also the U.S. is going to. Therefore, as I live, declares Yahuwah of armies, the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, Moab will assuredly be like Sodom and the sons of Ammon like Gomorrah. And again, that's the same thing I said about the, the U.S., Said about uh, Babylon will become become a heap of ruins, never inhabited again, completely destroyed. Gr uh, ground overgrown with weeds and full of salt mines, and a permanent desolation. The remnants of my people will plunder them, and the remainder of my nation will inherit them. This they will have in return for their arrogance, because they have taunted and boasted against the people of the Lord of armies, of Yahuwah of armies. Yahuwah will be terrifying to them, for he will starve all the gods of the earth, and all the coastlands of the nations will bow down to him. Hallelujah. Everyone from his own place. You also, Ethiopians, will be slain by my sword. And there's also scriptural connections with Ethiopia and the U.S. And, and God actually, God does this in a lot of scriptures. It, it will list a, a bunch of different nations, but actually be referring to the same place. And a lot of the times, it's, a lot of the time, it's the U.S. But it's also going to come on those nations as well. 
you also, Ethiopians, will be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the land of the north. And here we go with a little bit more specific than these other ones in general Bible understanding, prophecy understanding. Although a lot of people don't realize that Assyria is also a reference to the U.S. Just as Babylon is. And this, goes, this all goes back to the beginning. It all goes back to Genesis chapter... I want to say 12 with Nimrod. It may be a different chapter, but uh, with Nimrod. He was the first world emperor. He's coming back as the Antichrist. He, he started Babylon originally. He started Assyria originally and Nineveh. And this is what we see here. You also Ethiopians will be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the north. And the north. That's a reference to the U.S. As well. And, and all these uh, connections. All these scriptural connections. The north. That's the northern kingdom of Israel. And I'll, I guess I'll just speak on this real quick. So the northern kingdom of Israel. Is also mentioned as Ephraim or Samaria. Because we know in the days after Solomon, I just mentioned this in, in the other video, in the days after Solomon, Israel split up into two nations. The northern kingdom of Israel, the house of Israel, and the southern house of Judah. The northern ten tribes and the southern, southern two tribes. And um, the northern ten tribes were scattered into the nations and are brought back in, in a covenant with God through faith. God said he divorced them, but he didn't divorce the house of Judah, the southern two tribes. And where are most of the tribes? Where where are all? Well, basically, a lot of the a lot of the tribes of Israel were are believed to have immigrated, are believed to have moved to the U.S. And this is where the majority of Christians are. And the house of Israel prophetically is Christians. In end time Bible prophecy, the house of Israel is Christians. It's believers. And this goes back to the mystery of the gospel. Like I just said, we're brought into, we're grafted into the house of Israel through faith. The northern house of Israel, which is scattered into the nations. And it's made up prophetically in the end times as believers in Jesus Christ. So... <clears throat> so this is why it says the land of the north because it was the northern kingdom of Israel the house of Israel and this is uh, when you, a lot of the time you see the land of the north not every time because there's other connections with other things as well when referring to the land of the north <laughs> Never mind, I'm not, I'm not even going to mention it. Someone's out here smoking weed, I, I smell it. I don't know where, but... Uh... It says, you also, Ethiopians, will be slain by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the north. Speaking about the U.S. And eliminate Assyria. And this goes back to what I just said. Assyria, Babylon. That's the U.S. And make Nineveh a desolation. Parched like the wilderness. Flocks will lie down in her midst. All animals that range in herds. Both the pelican and the hedgehog will spend their nights in the tops of her pillars. Birds will sing in the window. Devastation will be on the threshold. For he has uncovered the cedar work. The cedar work. Well, the th threshold is like a doorway. And cedar, cedar work, trees represent people. 
This is the presumptuous city that is speaking about the U.S. This is the presumptuous city that dwells securely, who says in her heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. How she has become a desolation, a resting place for animals. Everyone who passes by her will hiss and wave his hand in contempt. This is what's coming. This is what's coming upon the world. This is what's coming upon the U.S. Destruction. Complete destruction. So we got to be right with God. We got to overcome. We got to resist the devil. We got to resist temptation. We got to repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of mind, a change of heart. Deciding to turn from your ways and your life. Turn from your sins and give your life to God. Submitting your life to Him. That's repent. The gospel. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That so whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that perish is permanent death of body and soul because God is the judge and the punishment for sin is death. The death of body and soul. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. We can't be good enough to be right with God. He is holy and perfect. There's only one way to be, be right with God. Only one way to be justified before Him. And that's through faith. Because we can't do it by works. But God made a way. Jesus was perfect. He lived a perfect life. Made no mistake. Did nothing wrong. And in His perfection, He took on the punishment for us. Made the sacrifice for us. So that through faith in Him and what He did on the cross for us, if we believe that, if we believe that He died for our sins, was raised on the third day, and will give us eternal life through His blood, through His sacrifice, then we receive it. We receive, we have our sins wiped away and receive His perfection through faith. Praise Him. We receive His perfection through faith. And it's only through faith in Him that we can receive eternal life because we can't earn it ourselves. We can't earn it on our own. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not a lot of time left. 2020 ain't an accident. And it's not going back to normal. The Bible tells us what to look for and what's going to happen. Right before the return of Jesus and the tribulation time, the worst period of time in the history of the world. We're talking about the wrath of God for all, all the sin of humanity. The wrath of God. He's going to destroy this place. He's going to destroy this world. And you don't want to be here for it. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. He's the only way to eternal life. The only way to salvation. Through faith in Him, we receive His perfection and are made right with God. So turn to Him. Turn to Jesus. Give your life to Him today. That's the end of Zephaniah 2. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.